Hey, what's up to all my gospel lovers out there? Welcome to another edition of our Gospel Love Podcast. I am your host, Damaris Johnson, where we give you treasures of truth to help you build a magnificent marriage. I am joined by the lovely Leslie. Hello. What's up there, Mrs. Leslie Johnson? You, what's up? Not much. I'm just glad to be here because we have an incredible, I'm talking about an incredible, as I was studying this thing out, this thing was blowing my mind as I got a greater glimpse of who you are and what you're capable of doing. Mm. It took me to a whole nother level. And all I could say was, oh my God, she's good. Amen. And that is the title of this podcast. <laughs> and I want to just tell you to strap in, ladies. Strap in because you're about to find out some things about you as a wife that I, I, I've never came across. And I'm I'm sure something will be said that you probably haven't heard or put a certain way. But it is it is some powerful information that, that will cause you to be the superwoman that God has created you to be. And that's right. I said it. I knew my super coming. woman mm-hmm. what was the what's the girl name she was right on when she made that song what's her name you talking about alicia Keys? alicia Keys. Mm-hmm. she was right on when she said she's a super woman mm-hmm. one of my favorite songs and so i want you to get ready to hear uh how you are to come into being this super woman that god has made you to be before we get into that i need to encourage you to continue to join us on our Facebook page, join our, we have a gospel of group now. Just type in gospel love group, join our group so that we can continue to feed you on a daily basis. These treasures of truth that will cause your marriage to be magnificent. That'll cause your marriage to be magical and out of sight. I'm talking about living, t- giving you what, what we've lived over the last 21 years now, my dear. Amen. 21 years what last week that's thursday Mm -hmm. yeah 21 years one week ago uh on may 18th i mean it was a it was a fabulous night i must say um just having dinner and chilling with you that's all we just we just chilled out nice quiet evening away from everything and everybody amen okay see amen that thing pretty hard (laughs) yeah so um the reason she said that because we pastors and i'm i'm pastor demaris and so you know i'm always got something going on all the time you know and I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm engaged and involved in a lot of things that is that you know that speaks to people's lives so for us to be able to spend a evening away from the phones being off and mm-hmm. you know we have a lot of bonus hot children. tubs and bubble baths and all that yeah. stuff is um is a unique thing for us and so we um we want to encourage you to connect with us uh, on our social media you know our gospel love um Twitter page, our gospel love, Instagram, you know, our gospel love, uh, Facebook page and, and just join our group so that we can stay connected, you know, so that we can continue to give you what it is God has given us. And we thank you because it's a privilege to us to be able to fulfill the purpose and destiny upon our life. That's to build strong, magnificent marriages, which will produce strong, magnificent children, which will go out into society and reproduce what they came out of, which should impact our society in a way that we haven't seen and that's our responsibility and roles to impact marriages so that they can build the families to produce children that'll go out in society and and establish the kingdom of god and so um we encourage you to do that now sister leslie um man where do we start uh let, let me let me share this with you we we're going to launch from the thought uh, that we find in, in uh, the, the, the book of all books, the book of wisdom in Proverbs 18, 22, where it says, He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor from the Lord. And then in Genesis 2 and 24, it talks about, Therefore shall a man leave father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. We're going to uh, couple those thoughts together and bring you six phases of developing a magnificent marriage six phases to developing a magnificent marriage and the first thought i want to launch from sister leslie is she's not just good to me but she's good for me okay i like that one yeah i like that too when we first look at that uh truth in he that found the wife found the good thing the first thing you know i thought about was how much pleasure she can bring me Mm mm-hmm you know, and when we when we look at it though, that's really that's really not the most important aspect of that particular verse. I think most men think that first though. Yeah. You know, we always got the pleasure thing on our mind. All the time. <laughs> All the time. 
<laughs> even at the I, 21. I agree with you on that. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> so we got, she's not just good to me. And when we think about the to me part, and a lot of times we think about the, the sexuality, we think about the sensualness, we think about the, you know, the things that benefit us in the sense of the physicality of it, you know, from everything from what happens in the, in the holy place to what takes place in the living room, you know, when mm-hmm. watching movies, it's always about the sensual side, the carnal side, the fleshly side, the soulish side. You know, when we think about the the goodness and we think about that part of it, but but it, it's it's beyond that. You know, it's beyond that. Definitely. When when you really look at it, it's really getting into uh, the the soul of a man, mm-hmm. the soul of a husband. You know, when that word that, that word good there, uh, it's something something you know that's powerful. That word good is the same word that's used to describe the goodness of God. Mm. I mean, think about that. Mm-hmm. So, so that you, you, you got a word that describes you. To me, you're just as good to me as God can be. Yeah, that's deep. I mean, when you think about when you think about that word, that same word that's used to describe the goodness of God, it's really an extension. The wife speaks of a woman being a, the extension of the goodness of God to the life of her husband. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a powerful thought. I mean, when I think about it, when I really think about it, when I really, you know, get to the place where I sit back and I reflect back on our relationship and I think about, there's a certain picture or image I had in my mind when it came to my wife. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I said in our, in our promos that described uh, this particular message was, fellas, she has it. We just got to be able to recognize it and confirm it. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I didn't recognize your goodness initially. No. Because the image that I had in my mind, you didn't quite fit. Or I couldn't see you fitting. You fit, but I couldn't see it, I should say. Right. But once I realized it, Everything that I, I mean, every, even down to the femininity, to the, to everything. I mm-hmm. mean, how do we, as men, become blinded to that? And then how do you, as a woman, maintain your confidence knowing you have what it takes to be a good wife, but it's not being recognized? I think, I, well, to answer the first question how do men become blinded by that? I think a lot of it has to do, unfortunately, with the negative media that we see. But then, um, if you're a woman who was raised with confidence, you're able to maintain your confidence no matter what. But I know with me specifically, I was raised confident, but on top of that, I think I was a little, um, what's the word? I'll say rebellious, for lack of a better term, because if you told me I couldn't do something, I was going to prove you wrong. So I rose to the challenge. So yeah. you, so what you said is because you, I, I acted or spoke in a way that expressed me not thinking you were what I whatever, knew. right? You, 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 you said you're going to prove me wrong. Exactly. Well, I know. A lot of times as a man, we don't recognize certain qualities Mm -hmm. that are important for a wife. And I think it's important that we be able to recognize those things because we we, we go looking for something in another woman that the woman that God gave me already has. Mm -hmm. We go looking for something in other people that that's already that's already inside of the woman that 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 I have. That's why I said, fellas, she got it. Fella, she has it. You just got to know how to identify it and confirm it. Because once you once you hear what we're about to talk about, about the goodness of the woman, of a wife, then you're going to realize, my God, what if what what have I got in my hand? What what has God given me? Mm-hmm. You know, he that findeth, he that findeth a wife, he that findeth a wife. And we're going to talk about the six things that helps you to develop a magnificent marriage. Mm-hmm. The first thing is find it. That we find it. Finding, right. Um, I also wanted to say, I shouldn't say that I was totally trying to prove you wrong because you kind of confirmed that I was what you needed because every time you would say something negative like, 
I didn't have the qualities that you wanted me oh, to have. Oh, why you had you to tell would, folks that? Yeah, you would then turn around and call me and beg me to come and see you. And so I was kind of like, well, why do you want to see me if I'm not what you want? You know, but you kept coming back. So she that is gave speaking me a of a very fire. time yeah. that I would not want to remember. I was completely <laughs> unsaved, didn't have a clue who God was, didn't know the love of God, and I was just a wild, rebellious knucklehead. Yeah, but I want to. I want to be I was accurate the best here. Thing walking so, around the planet. Yeah, you would say things negatively, and then you would turn around and try to clean it up because I could see the goodness seeping out of you. Right. It was trying to come out, but then. You know, the dark side would always hover right on top of it. You know, and, it would go back and forth. And speaking of that, I mean, because because the scripture says he, he that findeth, mm -hmm. and that word findeth, that doesn't mean the traditional thought of our Western definition. It means you go out to look in a sense where you're searching with a particular thought in mind. Mm -hmm. and that I think that's a lot of where men go wrong when it comes to a wife. You know, they have a, a chart, so to speak, posted on their wall. And when they see somebody, they go home and they check off certain things about them. And that's right. not the way it works. Not at all. When the word of God says, he that findeth, that means to appear in one's path. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's like a scene Poof. out of a movie. <laughs> Right, it's like a scene yeah. out of a movie when you're when you when when you see a man who's doing something, he's dealing with work or something. Then he looks up and he sees the he sees the beauty of his life. Woman in a red dress. Woman in a red, Ooh. and he get <laughs> and he's slave when he sees it. See, yeah. and I believe I believe that's the same way. That's the same way it happened for Adam. When Adam when Adam when God brought Adam to Eve, it's the same spirit. Adam, the word the word where we get the word woman from comes from the word wow. wow. Adam said wow. Oh, man, can you imagine when he saw it? He said, wow. <laughs> he couldn't believe what he saw. Remember, he had been looking at elephants and giraffes and mm -hmm. monkeys and caterpillars and frogs. Yeah. And then he saw this woman. He said, wow. Yeah. She's mine. Bring her to me. Mm -hmm. Come on. Bring me. Bring, give me her, guys. She's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. flesh. She belongs to me. That's my kind. That's right mine right there. Come on. Bring <laughs> that over here. I mean, that thing blew Adam's mind. As Adam was going about his purpose, God brought the woman into his path. Mm -hmm. And when it talks about finding men, you don't go out looking for a wife as, as, like you're looking for a vehicle. Right. As you go about fulfilling the purpose and destiny that's upon your life, God will bring her before you. She'll appear. Mm -hmm. One day she wasn't, the next day she is. She's dead. One day you can't see her, the next day she's right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, that's when you know, when you know, when you know, when, when you got to say, wow. Right. When you look up and you say, wow, I can't, I can't, this thing done stuck, got, got a hold of me. Mm -hmm. You know, this thing done, this thing had me calling you every day. Every day. Got, got me calling About you two or three times, times a day. A day. <laughs> <laughs> From Miami to Chicago. So he that findeth, he that findeth, mm -hmm. he that findeth, the wife findeth, the good. The first phase in developing and building a, mix, a magnificent marriage is finding a good thing find it and you got to be you got to be in the path and this this speaks to the the process of how god brings two together mm -hmm. the next phase is that he that finds a wife didn't say a girl didn't say a lady said a wife mm -hmm. in the hebrew mind in the hebrew thought the word means a mature woman under grace so what we got to understand i don't want to get too technical here yeah, sister I Leslie. some grace to uh yeah. You know, yeah, you still got you still got, you still got some grace on you to, okay. to deal with D now. All right. Okay, so now it says this. So the Hebrew thought is this. Mm -hmm. Every Hebrew word, there's particular letters that spell that word, just like in the English language. Mm -hmm. But every Hebrew letter, there's a picture and a number assigned to that letter in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Well, the picture that's assigned to the letter for this particular spelling of the word wife is the word for grace. Mm-hmm. And if you read that in sentence form, the, the other two letters that spell out this word, it means mature woman under grace. So when we think about a wife, a wife is not just a woman. It's not just a female, but it's a woman that understands the grace and the power of God that she's been given. It's a woman who knows what the grace of God is. It's the, it's the influence, the divine influence upon her life to have impact and influence on others. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about he that founded the wife, you're talking about encountering a woman that knows who she is in Christ, that understands her strength, that understands her influence, what she's capable of doing, 
Mm. All expressing her goodness and the nature of how good she is. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about a wife. Oh my God, she's good. Just think about that in itself. Mm -hmm. She's under grace, the grace of God. So she can distribute that goodness and that grace that's upon her life. She can now deposit that and use that to influence me as a man mm -hmm. to get my job done. Remember, she's called to be a help me. She's called to help meet and complete me mm -hmm. to do what it is that I'm called to do. What I'm saying, my man, is you need her. Sounds you need like her more than you realize. Proverbs 31, woman. Sister Leslie, I need you. Amen. I need you more than I realize. Mm -hmm. Husbands, you got to realize how needy you are for your wife. She, was in, she wouldn't be there unless God put her there for that particular reason to supply that which you're lacking. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about naturally and spiritually. There's characteristics and qualities that Leslie have that I just don't have. That if I didn't have those qualities in my life, I couldn't run a household. I couldn't manage. I couldn't raise my children. I couldn't manage my business. I couldn't do certain things if I didn't have those characteristics and those strengths that she has mm -hmm. to build me and to strengthen me. Mm -hmm. The idea of that third of the third phase is the word good. He that findeth the wife findeth a good thing. That thought in the Hebrew is a pleasant and agreeable person. Mm -hmm. Someone that's all not that that's not ready to brawl and fuss and fight, but someone that's ready to sit down and and deal with the conflict mm -hmm. with a level of understanding and passion and reasoning that you don't see in a normal female, but you can only see in a woman that's under the grace of God, a woman that understands the grace and power by which mm -hmm. she carry. The thought is this: it's a treasure chest of good. Mm -hmm. That's the thought in the Hebrew. There's a tre so so your wife, ladies. So ladies, listen. You are a treasure chest of good. Husbands, she is mm -hmm. a treasure chest of good. Sister Leslie, how do I tap into that treasure that's in that earthen vessel over there? You tap into it by your own goodness. That's what you do. Yeah. It, it's like a circle. It goes round and round. I think I said that before with something else. But um, it's a cycle. When you show yourself good, and even if you didn't, let me take that back. Even if you didn't. If the woman is operating in that proverbial 31 mindset, it'll win him over anyway, mm. you know, whether he's being good to you or not. Right. Because the scripture says this, mm -hmm. it's the goodness of God that leads a man to change his mind. Mm -hmm. It's the goodness. So and remember, this is the same word, the same word goodness here. It's the same word used to express God's goodness is used to express the woman's goodness. Mm -hmm. So the woman, in a sense, the wife is an extension of the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. That's how good she is, my man. She's good. Right. You just got to recognize it. And it's her goodness. It's your goodness, ladies. It's your goodness, wife, that's going to lead him to, for his mind to change. The actual word is this, the goodness of the Lord leads man to repent. Well, to repent means to change the way you think. Mm -hmm. See, your goodness eventually changed the way I saw you. Mm-hmm. Even right down to the physical qualities. Mm -hmm. It changed the way I saw you. But had you not been demonstrating that patience, that agreeableness, mm -hmm. that kindness, when I was acting a fool, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be sitting here 21 years later talking about, I still love you. Right. And what we're going to do tonight. Mm -hmm. So, so, so again. <laughs> you had to slip that in, <laughs> yeah, huh? Had to slip that in. <laughs> so, again, we're talking about uh, the six phases to uh, making marriage magnificent. And we, we're at the, at the third phase, which is the word for good. A treasure chest of good. A treasure chest of, of greatness, of pleasantness. The thought of, of all the things of, 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 of a woman's uh, agreeableness to, to, to be pleasant and to bring forth the life that God would have her bring forth out of that man. And, and then get this. It says the fourth thing is the favor of God. Mm -hmm. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, Sister Leslie, you are living proof that I'm favored of God. I am. Amen to that. I am definitely favored of God. Even a woman in the parking lot thought that. Cut <laughs> <laughs> it out. But we won't go there. Let's not go there. You. So when we talk about when we talk about favor, we're talking about me doing or me being in a position to receive the favor of God because you're my wife. Mm -hmm. I don't think we see that as men, that you are a representation of the favor God has toward me. Mm -hmm. What's in you? What's in you, I need, what's in you is a part of the favor that God's showing me. Mm -hmm. If I don't tap into you, 
If I don't tap into your soul, if I don't tap into your spirit, all of those giftings and all of those those uh, principles and all of that life that's inside of you, I won't be I won't benefit from that favor like I'm supposed to. Right. A lot of times we as men, we want to see the favor of God. All I got to do is look to my wife. Mm -hmm. She has it. Mm -hmm. She's a treasure chest of favor. Mm -hmm. I just have to understand how to tap into it and how to draw it out of her mm -hmm. so that it can be shown toward me. Right. And then as women, why are you saying the men don't understand? I don't think the women really understand it either. Because, I mean, I know it's a worldly saying, you know, happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. We heard that you know a lot over this past weekend but i think that we need to understand as far as being a treasure chest of good that it's not just about happy wife happy life i mean there's some responsibilities with being happy you know mm -hmm. as far as um i shouldn't say the world but just in relationships period you can't look to your spouse to make you happy. Mm -hmm. You have to look unto God for your happiness and gain that joy from the knowledge of the scriptures mm -hmm. and not, you know, because it's a lot of days, like I may say, Damaris, can you do this? Can you do this? And he doesn't do it. So does that mean I shouldn't be happy because he didn't do what I asked him to do? No, it doesn't. Because when I go to the store, I'm going to still pick up his favorite cashews and all that uh -huh. other stuff, whether he did it or not, you know, so it's not just about happy life, happy wife. You just have to be happy on the inside in that, order for the treasure chest of good to come out of you. No, that's a great point. That reminds me of one of the challenges that we, we have to end up instructing and, you know, uh, encouraging our couples to do is not to look to the wife or the husband as the source of their love. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that we face is we, we want to love because of, and we want to love each mm -hmm. other because of the good that comes out of them. Mm -hmm. But if you look to, that's making them the source of your love. Well, right. God is love. And what that means, whenever the Bible says God is a thing, they are saying that God is the source of that thing. Mm -hmm. So God, the only way my love can increase in the bound for Leslie mm -hmm. is not for Leslie to keep doing good to me, but it's for me to keep tapping into the source of love. Mm -hmm. The closer I get to the source of love, the more of the source that I pull from, the more that I have to give, the more that I have to be, the more that I have to share. So it's not you being my source, but you are the recipient of the love that comes through me to you through the source of love, which is God himself. And a lot of couples make that mistake. They look to, they look to their spouse to do enough good to make me love them more. Mm -hmm. And when they don't, they, that's going that's a losing battle. Cause when they don't do enough good, right. they're going to end up saying, well, I don't love you anymore. I don't love you like I used to, because mm -hmm. they look to you to be their source. Mm -hmm. But ultimately if they look to God to be their source, there's a never ending supply right. from God almighty. Right. When you see his goodness, mm -hmm. but all things being equal, the woman is an extension of that goodness mm -hmm. and that goodness comes to us. That goodness is so great that God made a powerful statement in Genesis, the second chapter in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. He said, for this call shall a man leave his mother, his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. That is a powerful statement when you think about it. Now we got to get it out of our westernized mind. Mm -hmm. When you left home, when you left home in, in the Hebrew mind, when you left home in that culture, you were leaving your inheritance, you were leaving your support system, you were leaving your guidance system, you were leaving your nurturing system, you were leaving your comfort system, you were leaving the, the entire source of life right there that just didn't happen right. you didn't just leave mm -hmm. when god told abraham to leave that was that was a monumental event for abraham mm -hmm. you didn't just leave your family like that you didn't just leave and go off when when you when we got married and 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 they got a house they either built the house next door to their parents or they built the house on top of the roof of their parents house right they built an extension right they didn't just leave like that like we think in our mind so for mm -hmm. this to say for god to say for this cause shall a man leave mm -hmm. that means to be loosened from for a man to be loosened from the from the from the guidance of his father mm -hmm. and the instruction of his father and the comfort of his mother and the nurture of it, that's a powerful st that's who you are. I'm supposed to leave my my incubation system, my system of development, and come to you. And we just continue on what you left off as wives. It's just naturally in us. I don't even think that it's an expectation so to speak of the husband it's just something as women we naturally do it's just something that God deposited in us to just take over and care for our men you know just as we care for our children and the we, number one mm -hmm. issue 
we see a lot of times in marriages is this attitude from both sides Mm -hmm. that when they get you, you're supposed to be perfected. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be complete. You're supposed to be whole. Well, that's not the case. No. That's not the case at all. Mm -hmm. The case is I'm still under construction. Mm -hmm. I'm still under development. You're still under development. Yeah. And as we come together, as you be who you are and I be who I am, Mm -hmm. we help each other to continue that nurse, that development. Mm -hmm. So the thought is when when I as a man am to leave the the nurture of my mother Mm -hmm. and the comfort of my mother, I come to I come to my wife who's an extension of those things. Mm -hmm. You represent that nurture in my life now. You represent that comfort that I need now. You represent continuing to help me to develop and grow. This is who a wife is. Yeah. And you know what that made me think about? Um, one day you were speaking about things being engrafted into other things and if you go to um, the 22nd chapter of Genesis 2 it's talking about the rib that God took from Adam to make the woman so in essence if she's an extension of him literally Mm -hmm. with the rib and then we are engrafted into one another Mm -hmm. and that route and then um at the end of verse 24 it says and they shall become one flesh so that's that whole idea of being engrafted within one another where as we're married we grow together Mm -hmm. just as we are being engrafted into one another amen and that's exactly right so so when we come together a man still needs that nurture and that comfort as he develops Mm -hmm. the wife represents that in other words we think when we think when we say when that says leave your father mother that means leave them in a sense physically Mm -hmm. it really doesn't mean that the thought in that is listen i'm leaving this nurturing environment this comfort environment this empowering environment and i'm coming to my wife and i'm and i'm coming to that aspect and now that 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 don't stop now Mm -hmm. that is just a continuation it's just a different environment now exactly but what what god intended marriage to be was an environment that we both empower each other Mm -hmm. right now we're focused on the goodness of the woman Mm -hmm. and the goodness of the wife and the goodness of the wife speaks to the wife being an extension of the father and the mother Mm -hmm. i'm not fully developed just because i moved out of my house or the house of my parents not at all i still got some development to do Mm -hmm. and though so the wife the wife is the person who who once I leave now, she becomes the defining person in my life. She helps to to perfect the, the identity that my father has given me. Mm-hmm. She helps to push me into the purpose that my father has shown me that, that I'm supposed to fulfill. Mm-hmm. That's what the wife brings. So, so wives, listen now, listen now. You're still a you're an integral part of the development of your husband. He still may have identity issues. He still may not be secure in who he is. Mm-hmm. He still may not fulfill fully know what his purpose is. You now become that extension. You now become that that bridge that says, "Come on, honey, this is who you are. Right. You this is what you can do." Leader. Yeah, yeah. You become his cheerleader. Mm-hmm. You become, you know, you got to do some flips and and do the splits and spin around. I don't and do know all about all stuff. that, but you know oh, what I'm okay. saying. Right. So <laughs> oh, yeah, slow down. So Whoa, get excited. Oh, get Nelly. excited. My cheerleader. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, she becomes. Mm-hmm. That, that person that solidifies his identity. Right. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about what you ain't and what you can't do and you don't never do this and you ain't never done that and you can't do this and you won't mm-hmm. be coming, you ain't going to be... Right. She just tear him down. You don't tell him what he ain't. You tell him what he is. Oh, man. Tell him, sister. That's- I know. We were watching this show and we talk about that all the time and um, about women speaking to their husbands in a certain way because sometimes I hear women speaking to their husbands even just, you know, in the grocery store... And in my mind, I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, my gosh, if they're saying this like this in a grocery store, I can just imagine what's going on. But make a long story short, I I was watching this show that I really like. And it's about it's set in the times of kings and queens and um, which is probably one of my favorite time periods. But um, the king was feeling real down about what was going on in his kingdom and people rising up against him. 
And the queen stood up and said, you are the king. Mm. You are this. You are that. And you could see his whole posture just, just changed. Just his out, chest his came out and everything his else. His face got all strong. And he looked at his wife, who was his queen, and she was just going on telling him who he was and what he can do. And he went out there and won the war. My God. Now, <laughs> you, get a woman, you get a woman talking yeah. like that, she brings out the king in you. I said, praise she bring, God. It reminds me of David and, and um, what was the woman's name? Uh, Nabal's wife. I can't think of a name but she yeah. spoke to the king and david mm -hmm. she spoke to and she and david was about to go kill her husband mm -hmm. and he and david said he said my god he said my god god mm -hmm. has sent you he said listen after we deal with him i'm gonna come get you you're gonna be my wife amen you know that. she spoke to the king and david mm -hmm. and david didn't go and slaughter and do that thing that wasn't right in the, in god's sight mm -hmm. cleaving to the i mean leaving the household mm -hmm. and running or cleaving that word is cleave there it means to catch and cling the sixth thing is to cleave a man is to leave is to loosen himself from the influence of a father and mother father which defines the identity and purpose of a man mm -hmm. and the mother which speaks to the nurturing and the comfort of a man this is what the wife has within her treasure chest of good is that ability to help to establish the identity? Is that ability to help pursue and push to push her husband toward his purpose? Is that ability to nurture when it's time to nurture and to comfort when it's time to? Oh man, she's just good. I just man, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. It's just my God, she's good. Now you see what I'm saying? My God, she's good. We're talking about changing the way a man lives his life. We're talking about changing the way a man, the outcome of a person's life. That word goodness it defines and speaks to the outcomes. It speaks to the, it speaks to the nature. It speaks to the character. And it speaks to the outcomes that that a woman can produce in a man's life. Women, we husbands, wives, we need you. Just by speaking. We the need right you, thing my man. You need her. The power of the tongue. You need her to speak to you. You need her to confirm you. You need her to offer. You need her. Mm. My goodness. The sixth thing is to cleave. That means to catch and to cling. They're catching the so my 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 posture as a husband is always to pursue, mm -hmm. is to catch. Mm -hmm. Once I catch, I ain't letting you go. Mm -hmm. You ain't going nowhere. You too good to let go. Amen. You too that. good to let go somewhere. I'm gonna mm -hmm. listen. I'm gonna merge myself with you. Okay. I'm gonna merge. See, see the the goodness. The goodness when we talk about not just good to me, but good for me. That that for me, it speaks to the soulish man. It speaks mm -hmm. to the goodness that she she is to my soul. She helps my soul. She helps my emotions. She helps my mental state. Mm -hmm. She brings me back into my right mind. She has the ability to help me to heal to bring healing to my soul to my inner man. She has the ability to bring healing to my to my emotions and, and my affections. She has the ability to cause my mind to think the way it's supposed to think. Mm -hmm. As the example you just gave, the king wasn't thinking like a king. No, he wasn't. He was thinking like a peasant. Mm -hmm. But after she spoke to him, he started thinking like a king again. Amen. Come on, wives, you know how to, man, you can make that man think like a king. <laughs> wow, she's good, my mm -hmm. goodness. All right. That's it. The six phases of building a magnificent marriage. But let me add this one thing. What you got to ask, Sister In Nancy. order to get him to think like a king, you have to be thinking like a queen. Oh, amen to that. Okay. You got to definitely can't be thinking like no little girl. Not at all. All right. So the six phases. And I like the word phases because it it, it, it makes us stay connected in each phase. It's like the, it's like a school situation. When I'm in the first grade, everything I learned in the first grade, when I go to the second grade, I don't leave what I learned in the first grade behind me. No. I bring it with me. Bring it with you. If I don't bring it with me, what's going to happen, Sister Leslie? Then you'll fall behind. Yeah, you're going to go struggle. Back. You're going to yeah, struggle. struggle. You're going to fall back. Mm -hmm. So when we say six phases, so you once you find it, now everything that took place in the, in the realm of finding, you got to bring with you in the second phase of a wife. Then you got to take the second phase and, and the third phase of the goodness. The fourth phase is the favor. The fifth phase is the is leaving. The sixth phase is cleaving. When you find your wife, when she when God brings her to you, when she's a mature woman under the grace of God, when she understands the treasures of goodness that's contained within her, when we see the grace, the empowering ability of a woman mm -hmm. that speaks the favor part, that's an empowerment. It means to be able to empower when we as men leave and cleave, which is represents phase five and six, now we're talking about having a magnificent marriage. Amen. Now we're talking about having a marriage that everybody going to look at you and say, I want that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when you talk about, oh my God, she's good, fellas, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. She's good. I hope I articulated this thing the way it came to me. 
because when we see it like God sees it, when we see our wife like God sees it, when we see the goodness of God and the favor of God that rests upon our wives, man, mm-hmm. how can you not help but to cling to her mm-hmm. and hold on to her and not let her go? Mm-hmm. It's something that we have to do a better job as husbands is recognizing and affirming and confirming that which is in her. If she's not acting like it, she will. Be patient. She will. Mm-hmm. But you got to see her as that good thing. God has made her to be. We got to go, Sister Leslie. All righty. We want to thank next time. We want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, remember now, I got to encourage you to stay connected to us. Uh, like, comment, share uh, this podcast with your friends, because there's a marriage out there that needs to hear some of the things that we just discussed. There's a wife, there's a husband out there that's going through it, that's connected to you and your facebook fam friends but we we're not connected to right we just want to be a blessing to them we want to be able to empower their marriage and help them build their family and make everything magnificent that's you know associated with them so we encourage you to you know like share comment on this post so that so that we can be a part of um bringing life and take this gospel love movement where god would have it to go Mm-hmm. Thank you. God bless you. We're praying and we're believing God for your marriage to be magnificent. And if you need anything, inbox us, email us. We're here to help you and, and be a blessing to you. Remember to join our Gospel Love group uh, on Facebook. Uh, go to our website at uh, gospellove.com. Go to our YouTube page at Gospel Love and just we got a ton of things for you that'll that'll be a blessing to you thank you god bless you and we will see you next time right here from gospel love